Well, hello friends, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to this series uh, on the restoration of this Medico Guardsman for my friend Johnny Ford. And if you saw the overview video which I posted last time, I talked about the fact that we need to deal with this tenon. And this is um, something I wanted to try to get a plan for before I even started doing any cleaning. So I had uh, that old tenon off of a broken Medico pipe and I tried heating to release it and things like that. and well, this is what ultimately happened to the shank of that pipe, uh, which is fine. I mean, that there, there was no pipe left. It was just the shank. Uh, and here is the, the tenon. Uh, so this is actually really well made and well knurled. Uh, I don't know if you can tell how deep that knurling is, but it, it's, uh, it, it's really quite an impressive job that they did here. They clearly did not want this coming out. And you can see some evidence of the adhesive in there, which is showing some of that knurling uh, still there. I heated this a lot. You know, I got this thing really, really hot, and the adhesive would not release. So whatever they were using was, was clearly heat resistant. And uh, boy, this is just really good works, uh, craftsmanship. Uh, something you don't see on factory pipes these days. So I'm quite happy about it that it was good to see that. Now, as I was doing that, I got to thinking, you know, how am I going to know, even if this comes out easily, how am I going to know that this is going to do the same thing? And in thinking about it, I thought, well, if, if this is the same tube here as in the tobacco chamber, then they're obviously going to have electrical continuity, meaning there'll be, there'll be a low resistance path between the two of them. So I went ahead and got out my multimeter. Not a normal pipe tool, but uh, you know, <laughs> any port in a storm, as they say. And this is just set to measure continuity, so it'll give a beep. Should give a beep. There we go. So it'll give a beep if things are electrically connected to one another. So for example, the tenon here, if I place the probe here and here, they are connected. And you got to be careful, you know, if this is a dirty surface, you might have to move it around a bit to get to clean metal, but that should work. So, if I put this into the tobacco chamber and touching that, uh, that grate that's in there, and then I come down here, sorry, make sure I get this in shot. So, I'm going to go all the way down, I'm going to make sure I'm making contact with that metal grate. And then I come here and touch move around. There we go. So these, this is clearly making electrical contact with that plate inside. Okay, that doesn't mean they're the same piece, but it means they're, they're definitely touching, and they're touching in a way that uh, is making them electrically continuous. So that makes it a bit risky trying to remove this in a fashion similar to this. I certainly don't want to break up the shank. But I still think this is going to be useful. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to face this off and we're going to actually drill this out to a point where it will accept this tenon going in there and we'll epoxy it in place. And that should be as good as uh, as it was. You know, that, that should hold uh, just as well. We'll rough the surface up in there so that it accepts the, the epoxy well and we'll use a uh, really good epoxy that's heat resistant. I don't see why that would not work. We've got one other uh, slight issue which is that this is a bit longer than the original so I've got the original stem here and this goes in you know about that but that's okay we can we can trim this off. Uh, we can put it on the lathe and just just trim it that's not going to be a problem we can grab it here in the chuck. So we'll trim that down a bit, but uh, this will work. This will this will almost certainly work. Drilling the hole is going to be a bit tricky because I can't put this in my lathe. Uh, and even if I could, getting that centered is going to be a, a royal pain. But that's okay. I've got a drill press jig that I can put this in, and I'll be able to, to drill that out. And we'll get it to whatever size this is. But that's a future problem. Right now, we got to focus in on cleaning the pipe. And that's going to be just a lot of work with pipe cleaners and, uh, and alcohol. Now the first step 
So the way I, I deal with pipe cleaning is that I clean the inside before the outside. And the reason I do that is cleaning the inside often creates a big mess, which will get transferred to the outside. So if you clean the outside and then work on the inside, you're going to wind up getting the outside dirty again, and you're going to have to clean it all over. So we're going to focus on the inside, and actually the first thing we're going to do is not pipe cleaners, but we're going to ream this ball. And to do that, we're going to start off with the, uh, the good old castle reamers, and I'll get the smallest size out. And yep, that barely fits. And we're just going to go down to the point where we touch that metal. Um, it's not going to be that hard to know when we've gone as far as we can go. And that's probably it. And I don't have a... We'll use this piece of paper here. There we go. Plenty of cake came out of that. And yeah, that's that's pretty good. So we're going to do that. Um, probably go one size up on the castle reamer. And then we will take uh, my favorite reamer, which is the one that Phil Rivara made for me. And I'll be able to use this to go around the inside of the bowl and just scrape the sides like that. So, I'm going to do that. You've, you've seen everything that I need to do in that process, and I'll bring you back after the pipe is reamed. All right, so we've done, uh, we've done the reaming, and hopefully you will be able to see that that is much more clear. A carburetor in the bottom. I don't know if it's actually called a carburetor. I've seen people call it that. I have not seen that in any of the Medico literature, but I'll call it a carburetor just to make life simple. Uh, the walls have been reamed. Uh, I, I think I've got a picture showing you the, uh, the carburetor in a bit more detail. So to get to this point, you know, I started off with the, the, the castle reamers, which you've seen me use before, you know, just these guys here. And then, you know, I got to a point where Though those weren't being helpful anymore, so I switched over to this little uh, three-corner, three-sided reamer from from Phil Rivara, and that allowed me to to really get the edges smooth. And where this is really helpful, uh, you know, on this pipe, there was some unevenness in the cake. There was more cake back here than on this side, so I was able to focus in with this a bit more. And uh, of course, it's got a nice rounded bottom, so it didn't do any any damage down there to that carburetor. Uh, to get that clean and to get the the cake removed from the sides of the carburetor and uh, you know basically get get the thing clean, I had to resort to for the most part using a, a little dental pick here and just going in there and, and scraping it. So I was uh, channeling my inner Cliff Higgins and uh, got that all out. So I, I think just in terms of the tobacco chamber, it's it's properly reamed at this point, and the next step is going to be to clean the airway. So to do that, uh, we're going to use bristle pipe cleaners for a while, and then we will switch to soft pipe cleaners. This is a little bottle of um, Everclear, which is my alcohol of choice for cleaning pipes, and this is going to be a lot of this kind of stuff. So we're just going to wet the wet the pipe cleaner, and get it all the way in there, and uh, you'll probably not be able to see this, but there's actually some gunk and liquid coming up through that carburetor as we do this, which is good. That means we're getting all the way through. You probably see a little bit of the alcohol splashing around down there. And we're just going to keep doing this until Basically, these start coming out clean, and you can see we got a ways to go, but that's okay. Um, this is this is a process that you have to take your time with. It's going to use a lot of pipe cleaners. It's going to take a fair amount of time, but it's very important that we get that airway completely clean. So I'm going to work on that for a while, and I'll bring you back before the next step, which is going to be working on All this right, guy well, here. I think we've got this as clean as we're going to get it. I've been through uh, 
30 some pipe cleaners <laughs> scrubbing out the, the airway. Um, the test is to put a cleaner in and you know it should come out clean. Uh, I use the, the soft fluffy ones for, for that final cleaning and test. Now it was it was it was kind of challenging to get the pipe cleaner all the way in and what I wound up doing was taking a six millimeter bit um, doesn't have to be a six millimeter bit it just has to be something that comes pretty close to, to that airway and just reamed it out with that um, and a lot of sort of solidified tar came out on this that's an important point for this kind of pipe if you've got one of these if you're going to get one of these Johnny when you start uh, smoking this you got to keep it clean. You, it, you're going to have to have to every smoke run a pipe cleaner through this because all the moisture is going to collect down there. That's the point, right? And if you just let that sit there, it's going to congeal and turn into a solid brick that you're not going to be able to clean out unless you do something like this. And this is no fun, believe me. <laughs> so a lot of pipe cleaners, some some uh, pretty heavy duty reaming. And uh, you know it's it's clean now. If if I wet this with alcohol, just to see to be you know perfectly transparent, if I wet this with alcohol and put it in, it would come out somewhat stained. You're not going to get this to the point where this will come out white if it's wet because you're picking up stuff, you know, cake off the sides and all that. This is going to be retorted, and that will you know finally clean and sterilize everything. So I'm I'm okay with this level of of clean in the airway. And uh, the good thing is I hope you can see there that the the pipe cleaner actually you can see it passing through those holes I think you can see that so nice clean shot all the way to the end we're in good shape now we gotta cut this off um, so the idea is we're gonna cut this off we're gonna drill it out uh, to I forget what the measurement is here but we got a drill that will approximate this size and then we'll just epoxy and press it in and hope for the best. So this tooth tube runs all the way through as I've mentioned. Um, I can't get this in a lathe to, to cut it off. I'm gonna have to do it by hand and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over to the sanding belt and just get rid of the bulk of this. Get it to the point where it's very very close to that edge and then I'll use some files. So let me let me do the sanding belt stuff and I'll come back for the hand work and show you a little bit of that all right, back from the uh, the sanding belt, and I've taken that down as far as I dare uh, using that method. It's it's pretty close, and now I'm going to use a file, and this is um, so I keep separate files for metal, uh, not the same files that I would use making stems. I think that's important to keep them separate. Uh, this file has seen better days, to be honest. Uh, this is one that I use on aluminum a lot, and aluminum is very gummy, and it tends to, you know, stick to the file pretty well. So I, I got to spend some time cleaning this, but at any rate, it'll it'll work for now. And the idea is, and I'm not going to do a lot of this on camera because I need to be really careful with it, and the position that I've got right now is not favorable to doing it right. But you know, just take this and just try to do very even strokes until we're flush with that surface. The important thing is to not dig into that surface and certainly not to create any bevel uh, in any way on the surface because we want the stem to, to meet up nicely once we're all done. So I'm going to work on that and the next step is going to be to get this uh, mount it up on the drill press so that we can drill it out to the right size to accept this as uh, as its new uh, tenon. So I'm going to actually end this video at this point. I will finish this up and we'll start the next video over at the drill press. So thank you for watching. Um, if if you enjoyed this, please you know hit that subscribe button, hit the hit the notification bell so that you get notified when the next part of the series posts and uh, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us out a lot. It helps get the word out to other folks that might be interested in these sorts of videos. Uh, so thank you very much for, for uh, your time watching today and I look forward to seeing you in, in the next one.